Welcome, Stephen, to the show. Well, thank you, Sharon. It's great to be with you. I love what you're doing. And uh, welcome to all those folks out there listening around the globe. And we're so, so pleased to have you with us today. This is a special experience. Thrilled to have you. And I can't wait for everyone to learn from your own experience. So let me start out with a question. I was intrigued by what you said in terms of how you began in the speaking business. When I started my speaking career, and granted, most of it was done as a part of my J-O-B. I spoke for a living. Initially, I spoke about clinical sorts of things because that's what I was doing. But when I decided that I wanted to be a, quote, professional speaker, I identified multiple topics that I could address. Multiple is putting it mildly. My first list had over 30 titles. You seem to have chosen a different approach. You've worked in this sector of healthcare for over 30 years, and you've become an internationally recognized thought leader. What caused you to select this very narrow, very narrow niche for your speaking coaching business? Well, thanks, Sharon. That's a great question. Um, but as I think you know from uh, our, both of our backgrounds, um, I, I really didn't have this vision of being so narrowly focused when I started. I was in corporate America. Um, I had this this drive to own a, my own business and to be an entrepreneur. And so um, in 1979, I was working for a major corporation in Toledo, Ohio, had the opportunity to adopt a little girl, but I needed to move back to Pennsylvania. So I left Toledo, moved back to Western Pennsylvania, adopted a little girl and started into the speaking consulting business. And uh, at that time, I was very clear about what I would do. Uh, I would do anything for anyone at any time to get a check because I had these three kids <laughs> who wanted to eat three times a day. And uh, that's so, a driver of success, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and, and of course, we, we learned from our colleagues in the National Speakers Association about how to reach out and market and build a list. And of course, this was way before email and websites. And so, you know, I had my index card box with 400 names in it and I was sending out mailings, but I quickly learned that doing anything for anyone at any time was not going to work for me. And so I began to narrow my focus. And um, initially, coming out of manufacturing, my target was small to medium sized manufacturers. And I was living in Western Pennsylvania. So that triangle from Erie to Pittsburgh to Cleveland, of course, in the early 80s, the economy collapsed and manufacturers weren't doing things. And so mm -hmm. the the situation caused me to shift to the service sector and particularly to healthcare. And of course, at that time, the early 80s, uh, hospitals were saying we need to act more like businesses. Long-term care organizations were saying we need to act more like businesses. And so um, I, I shifted to that sector. Um, and then serendipitously, the the chairman of the board of a small home health agency in Western Pennsylvania called and asked me to do some strategic planning with them. And that was what I was doing. And so we uh, set up an engagement. I led them through the process. The CEO of the organization liked it. She uh, introduced me to other people in the industry, took me to the state association, took me to the national association. And so, uh, so the, the home health industry found me. I didn't go looking for it. 